Okay, we're going to go ahead and create a frame using a generic model adaptive. So we're creating an adaptive component. This is probably the simplest one, so we're going to start here. So I'm going to go to Family, New, and I'm going to scroll down, and you will get to Generic Model Adaptive. Select that, open it, and it's going to give you a very simple um, level one with two vertical planes. I'm going to change my background to not be a gradient. Click OK. All right, so what the adaptive components do is they you place points, and those points seek out and glue themselves to nodes um, that we'll look at later. So to make a frame, we're just going to make a square frame, so we're going to need four points. So I'm going to go under Draw and Point Element, and I'm just going to place four points. So one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go to Modify to stop that. And then I'm going to window around them. So I'm windowing around those points and selecting them, and I want to make them adaptive. So go ahead and click and make them adaptive. So now those are adaptive points, and they display a little differently based on those settings. The next step is to place a line that goes all the way and makes a square frame around these. So to do that, I'm going to use a reference line here. Click on Reference, go to Line. And what we want to do is select 3D snapping right here, because we want it to snap to these points and to be hosted on these points. So I'm going to 3D snapping, I'm going to left click on one, left click on two, left click on three, left click on four, and then close it off. And then to stop the line command, I'll go to the modify. Now, we have um, selected the exterior, but I want to put a frame around there and control the size of that frame. So to do that, I'm going to host a profile on a point. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to host a point by selecting point element and hovering over this line. And you'll see the point will turn small, which means it wants to host on that. You can always make sure that your draw on face is selected and it will host to whatever you select. So I'm going to left click. Now, once I left click, that point disappears. I'm not sure why. If you just go to modify, it will reappear um, a little annoying. But now you can pick that point and it gives you a little teeny tiny plane. And what we want to do is draw a profile on this point because this point is actually hosted to this line, which is great. It gives us a little bit of um, some modeling flexibility here. So pick that point so that makes it the current plane. Go to draw. And I'm just going to go to Reference Line, and I'm going to draw a reference line starting on that. Now, I made a mistake. Um, I want this to actually host on that plane, and I don't have that selected. I have Draw on Face selected, so I want to start over. I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to make sure that Draw on Work Plane is selected, and that 3D Snapping is not on because that will make sure that I am hosting to the current plane. So just to make sure that that point is the current plane, I'll pick it again. Go to Draw, Reference, Line. Pick on that. Now I'm just going to use the blue alignment lines to make sure that I'm lining up. All right, and so I'm just going to draw a little rectangle there. Now what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to set parameters on this to make um, to be able to make different sizes for it and control the size. So I'm going to tab until I get one of those, and I'm going to make the dimension permanent by clicking on it. Do the same thing for the vertical one. Click on that. Now I can put a parameter on these, and I'm going to use the same parameter. It's going to be a square, so I'm going to go to the, select both those, Go to the label, go to Add Parameter, and we are going to add the parameter, and we are going to call it Tube Width, and click OK. <clears throat> and so now you'll see that both of those have updated to 1 foot 8. And once you do that, you really want to go in and check that it's working. So I've gone to my Family Types dialog box here, which is right there, and it opens up and shows me that parameter. I can then say I want to try it at two, it looks like it's working. I can say, oh, I want it to be one and apply. So now that's controlling the size of that. Once I have that working, I can do what are called new family types. 
So I can go new and I can put in one foot. I'll click OK. That's set to one foot. Go to new, I'll type two feet. Click OK and then update the value to two and apply that. And then I'll make one more and we'll just call it four feet. Click OK and update that to four feet. Hit apply. Now, if I click OK, let me pan this over a little bit so we can see it better. Go back to my Family Types dialog box. I have these types available to me so I can just pick them and hit apply. Pick that and hit apply. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is actually make my three-dimensional part, which notice that the last thing I do is actually model. Just make the model. I put this whole rig together. So what I want to do is just pick that rectangle and then pick this rectangle and create form. Whoops, didn't get the second one, so let's do it again. Pick that, hold down the control to add, and create form. And it's going to sweep that around the edge. So now, basically, this geometry is being driven by the parameters in the rig that I set up. So if I go and change my family types, right, it updates. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you what a, you can add materials. So if I click OK, um, you can pick the 3D model and you'll see material here. If you click on this little square next to it, you can go to Add Parameter, and we'll name this Frame At, and we'll click OK, and we'll click OK. So now that geometry has a parameter set to it, and if you open your Family Types dialog box, that parameter will be available to you in all the different types. So for example, for the two foot, I could come in and I could put a different material on it. So if I did a search for, say, aluminum, I could go to this aluminum red down here, add it to my library, use render appearance, and click OK. And it'll add that to the two foot type. If I go to one foot, I can put a different material on it. So I can say aluminum, and there's a blue one. So we'll take that blue one, add it. Use render appearance there. And click OK. And click OK. And now if I come down here and go to shaded, you'll see that the one foot has the blue on it. And if I come up and go to the two foot, hit apply, it'll have the red. So you can also have material parameters. OK, so we'll come back and apply this to a divided surface with the nodes on it.